It's Kalia Monique. My first name's Kalia. My middle name's Monique. It's Kalia Monique. And today I am so excited for this video. This is the very first episode, the very first video of a series that I'm going to be starting here on my channel called Date with the Author. This series is going to be an opportunity for me to read more romance authors that I've either never have read any of their books before or I've only read a very 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 small portion of their catalog. Although I don't feel like I'm the type of person that reads like the same authors over and over, there are definitely a lot of popular authors I still not have gotten the chance to read yet, which is a shame. So with this series, I was able to read a good portion of their catalog and get to see if I actually like their books, if I enjoyed them. All right, so let's get into the rules. Starting off, I'm going to have a good portion of books from an author that I have in my mind. On our first day, I will read one of the author's books. If I enjoy that book, then the author will get a second date. If I enjoy that book, they can get a third date and so on and so forth. So I don't have an exact number of books that I'll read per author, but it will be a good enough amount for me to realize like, oh, I really do like this author's writing or mm, they're really not for me. And at the end of the video, I will decide whether or not the author has made it to base status. And if an author reaches base status, that usually means that I will be on the lookout for their books and I will more than likely pick it up when I see them in the future. Makes sense because they're bae. I believe that that is all the rules. So let me go ahead and announce this video's author. Honestly, like I said, I'm so excited for this video mainly because yes, it's a new series, but also this author is actually the inspiration for this series. So I just thank them so much for inspiring me in this way. So shout out to this author. And that author is Talia Hibbert. Yes, round of applause. Round of applause, please. Yes, we're excited. I actually have never read anything from Talia Hibbert. And I know, don't look at me. I'm ashamed. So you might have heard of Talia Hibbert through the Brown Sisters trilogy, which she has written. She just published the third book to that trilogy this year. So yeah, she's very, she's a very popular romance author. And I cannot believe that I've never read any of her work before. And I am so excited to be getting into it today. So recently on Instagram, Talia Hibbert posted a post where she discussed and kind of ranted about I feel like rant kind of has a negative connotation to it but honestly that's just when black women do it so so recently on instagram talia hibbert created a post where she kind of reflected on and kind of had a little rant session about how she doesn't like when people devalue the importance of romance and that's a conversation that i've never personally had because honestly didn't nobody know i could read until like i started this channel so <laughs> Basically, no one's ever come to me and try to like guilt me out of liking romance because I just started telling people that I actually read. So come at me if you want to, but I, like, I personally found my love for reading through contemporary and romance novels. In fact, there was a period of my time where I would solely read romance because it just brought me so much joy and increased my serotonin levels so much. And she had a very important point of the fact that like romance is actually a very important genre that we can learn a lot from and that it's honestly like a very therapeutic moment both for the author and the reader. And I wish deeply that I could share that post with you but she has since taken that post down. So yeah. first date I will be going on with Miss Talia Hibbert is The Roommate Risk. First and foremost, I would actually like to thank my friend Jenny for gifting me this book. I, I'm so excited. Jenny actually has their very own YouTube channel, so I will have that link down below. You can find them on Jenny Reads Maybe here on YouTube. I am so excited to read this book, mainly because Jenny really loves this book, but also because apparently the male lead in this book is boyfriend girls like, like truly boyfriend material so i just need to know whether or not i'll be fighting jenny for my man 
who is not yet my man because we haven't met yet but I, I feel like he I feel like he's gonna be my man you know I do not know much about this book except for the tropes and so I will share those with you and so the tropes that I know this book covers are friends to lovers and well it's the roommate risk so I would assume like forest roommates what is that called is it just the roommate trope all I know is that Jasmine, Alan, and Rahul Khan have been best friends for many years. And at some point in their friendship, Jasmine needs a place to live and Rahul gives it to her. What will he give to her? Gives her a place to live for a certain amount of time. I, yeah, I'm, y'all know I don't do synopsis. I feel like I'm justifying me not reading synopsis in like every video. But you know the deal. I'm gonna read the book. I'll come back with a synopsis for you. I'm so excited. So I have finished my very first date with Miss Tolly Hibbert, The Roommate Risk, and it was a really great date, you guys. I loved this book. It was ugh, all the serotonin levels. Like, I love Rahul. Rahul? Rahul. 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 I love Rahul. Um, Jenny and never lied because he's kind of my bookish boyfriend. Like, um, Miss Tolly Hibbert, do you do you love me in my friendships? Because I really don't want to fight with Jenny over this man, but I absolutely will. I'll fight with Jasmine over this man. He, the way Rahul spoke about Jasmine and her beauty and her personality and how great she was like I was like oh, somebody talk about me like that and it was just so lovely I'm like we all need a Rahul in our life like if if your man does not think of you the way Rahul thinks of Jasmine he don't really love you because literally that's all his thoughts are like she could do no wrong in his eyes and yes we all need that person that like checks us when he needs to be checked and that's exactly what he does even though he does kind of have rose-colored glasses on for her it's not even that he acknowledges her faults and he acknowledges her imperfections but he loves her for them and even adjusts the way he communicates with her to accommodate for her imperfections and and doing all of that while acknowledging his own imperfections and where he needs to improve and it's like wow like wow what is sexier than an emotionally aware man there's nothing nothing like whoo he he was more aware than i am whoo i don't even know what to say except that i love this book also talia hibbert um i don't know if i knew this about you but the smut i was not expecting it i was less than 20 pages in and they were doing things and i was like whoa 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 <laughs> Oh, slow down a minute, Tiger. Whoa. <laughs> but also, exactly. Like, where were you when I, where were you when I had a smutathon? Because if I had, we're going to have to do a smutathon round two. But <laughs> literally, this book gave me everything I needed an emotionally aware, an emotionally conscious male lead. Jasmine had her faults but she was also really I loved Jasmine as a character like she definitely had her faults she was kind of more of like the wild party girl spirit while Raul was like, a lot more serious he's an accountant she's a lawyer for a nonprofit. It, they're kind of like opposites attract but rather opposites are compatible because yes they were attracted to each other literally their entire friendship like both of them were very attracted to the other person from the very start of their friendship but for both of them their friendship was far more important than being in a relationship with this person because a relationship isn't forever and I just oh I loved how that went about I felt like the pacing for this novel was actually very nice it is a short novel but it did not feel rushed to me at all the third act argument that literally every book has wasn't wasn't bad at all like that also felt very realistic it was something that needed to happen and we all saw coming <laughs> like literally even the characters were like this is it's gonna hit the fan at some point and we were just all waiting we were all waiting for the third act to hit so that we can go ahead and love each other and become better honestly I 
don't I don't really care for the third act argument do what you got to do authors I don't dislike it and I don't like it I'm very indifferent towards it but this like wow I really liked this third act conflict because of how the characters got out of it like how it ended up being resolved I thought was very adult and <laughs> demonstrated a lot of self-reflection in the part of both characters which I deeply appreciated and I swear I've never seen in any other book like I know technically most books have that like self-reflect self-reflection between the characters or whatever but this like was truly therapeutic like I honestly I can understand why Talia Hibbert would have that post about the importance of romance novels um clearly she was talking about her romance novels because honestly this whole thing this whole book felt very therapeutic felt very aware and like emotionally conscious so I appreciated that it was like something I didn't know I needed in romance because I do often think of romance as like a fluffier piece to my reading be like after I read a ton of fantasy or just like harder tougher topics in novels I'll always go to a romance to make myself feel better because again it does have that nostalgia feel of when I was like a younger reader plus the fact that like the topics discussed in romance tend to be just a bit um less intrusive a little, a little less trauma based so I liked how there was trauma in this book but how it was dealt with like reflection and like therapy was discussed in this book and there is nothing nothing sexier than black mental health being addressed in a book like I loved that I loved every single character in this book I liked side characters I liked the tertiary characters like I loved the characters in this book like I every encounter was important every interaction was important it was just such an amazing book to the point where I found myself reading this book and comparing it to other novels that I read before in the best way like I'd be reading something and I'd be like see this is what I was missing in that book the fact that I'm thinking about these books that I did either like or really didn't like but it was just like this is exactly what I needed those books to do or this particular the way this topic was covered is exactly how I needed this book to cover it and I was like see I'm not tripping like I have not lost my mind clearly an author can address a topic this way clearly the conversations can be broached and approached in less than 300 pages because Miss Talia Hibbert did it and she did it amazingly I can't remember if I said it or not but I did give this book four stars absolutely moving on to our second date I am I'm so excited. And for the second book, I will be reading Guarding Temptation. I was about to say by Talia Hibbert. I think we've already addressed that. So yeah, I will get back to y'all when I finish this very short novella. so I have officially completed my second date with Miss Talia Hibbert and I must say it wasn't as great as the first date but it still was very amazing and here's why. In Guarding Temptation Nina is a journalist 
for a website that she created. She makes very difficult political issues a lot more manageable to be read by the general public. Also, there is James, who is Nina's brother's best friend. Nina's brother is a part of the military and he has been deployed elsewhere. And so he bestows upon his friend James the task of guarding his sister, protecting his sister while he is away. James is this like hulking, muscly, big dude. Apparently he like big, he, he big. That is all I, th listen, if you didn't get nothing else from his description, it is that he is big. This man is a giant, okay? A giant of nothing but muscle. Whew. I don't know if it's hot because it's hot or if it's hot because he hot. Nina has already felt these feelings for him and kind of has this unrequited love, or at least that's what she thinks, because as the years go on, James finds himself also seeing Nina in a light far beyond the childish girl he once saw her as. Nina has posted an article discussing Brexit and it has made a few white people, a few racist upset, and they have begun threatening her and she is honestly fearful for her life. And so she reluctantly goes to James for help. Prior to actually going to James for help, Nina and James were not actually speaking to each other or rather Nina was not speaking to James. Prior to this situation, they actually had a falling out for reasons that are actually expressed in the prologue on page one. Wow. Um, love this book and james is there to guard her he is there to protect her in every way he knows how and so as he is guarding her and protecting her as they are trying to get answers and trying to give nina back to the safety that she once felt before this all happened both nina and james are forced to confront why they had the falling out and to finally hopefully discuss their feelings for one another guarding temptation is of course a novella so Always with novellas, I expect a, like less than I would give with a novel. A novella isn't a full-blown novel, and so I don't expect what I get for novels. And so my rating system for novellas is quite different than regular novels because I'm like, how much background can you give? How much story can you really tell me in so many pages? And the answer is a lot, apparently. I find myself with novellas often feeling like there's something lacking, and... While I did kind of feel this way regarding Temptation, it was only lacking because it's Talia Hibbert. So let me explain. After reading The Roommate Risk, I had such high expectations for Talia Hibbert. Like I said, she kind of became the blueprint for other authors in my mind. I know for a fact that I'll always be comparing other romance authors to Talia Hibbert moving forward. And so I now have her on that standard. I'm going to compare your work as like the end all be all the greatest example of what romance should be. And so what I found lacking in this novella wasn't that it was actually lacking anything. It was just that it was so much like other novels that I had read. Also, I still have Raul in my head. So James, is that his name? Was kind of lacking. Um, I loved the tension in this romance. I love Nina as a character. I like how fierce she is and how determined. I loved that that is what James also loved in her. I I actually liked how their relationship progressed, kind of. I don't know how one can have a slow burn in a novella, and yet Miss Talia Hibbert did that. Like how in less than 100 pages did it still feel like a slow burn? Let me know your ways. Miss Talia Hibbert because huh less than 100 pages and it still felt like a slope I was like when when y'all just gonna get together y'all know damn well how you feel about each other overall I would give this novella three stars I think it was a really great novella I actually really enjoyed it also if I were to rate it just like as a novella like just doing the job of a novella five stars absolutely did that thing. The story was so intriguing and interesting and kept my attention throughout the whole story. And it managed to do that all so succinctly in just a few pages. Like that is truly amazing to me. And based on this date, as well as my date with the roommate risk, I absolutely am going to be giving Talia Hibbert a third date.
Oh, okay. Oh my God, please, please don't mind me. I am running really late to my third date and I, I just really hope that I like this date. I really feel as though I'm going to love the date. The past two dates have been so amazing. I just really hope that this date loves me and that I love it. And it's just, there is a lot riding on this date because from the very first moment I was ever introduced to Miss Talia Hibbert, it was through this third date. I am by far very nervous, but absolutely, unequivocally, so excited for this date. And we can all agree that third dates are quite important because it is when you decide more than once that you will actually give a person a chance. It is when you are trying to get to know each other more and when you're sharing more of yourselves with each other. And so for the third date, I thought it would be very important to actually tackle this author's series. This author actually has multiple series and this series by far is their most popular. This is actually how I was introduced to Talia Hibbert. And so, y'all, I'm not gonna lie, I'm quite nervous because not even, never mind. I was gonna be like, what if I don't like it? There is no chance in hell I don't like this series. Like, first of all, it is her most popular work, but also the first two dates were literally so amazing. I mean, we're being a bit dramatic with that second date, but that first date outshines everything I've ever read in romance. So there's something to be said there. Were you able to guess what our third date is? Yes, you're correct. I mean, I'm guessing you're correct because who who can't guess? You hear Miss Talia Hibbert and you think of the series. It is, of course, the Brown Sisters trilogy. I am so excited. Just like any good third date, you're really trying to get to know the person. And so I thought Talia Hibbert's newest writing, newest books, newest writing style would be best expressed through the series. And so I... Can I say I'm excited one more time? Let's let's see. This is a whole, I was gonna say four course, but there's literally only three sisters. So it's just a meal. <laughs> For our appetizer, we have Get A Life Chloe Brown. For our dinner, for our main course, we have Take A Hint Danny Brown. And for our dessert, which how fitting is this? Because from what I've heard, this is the most relatable sister, the one I am most likely to enjoy, personality-wise at least, Miss Actor Age, Eve Brown. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into this third day. finished Get a Life Chloe Brown and I know that this is only the first part of a three-part date but after finishing this book I realized that there is no way that I can give a good review of the date at the end like I just there's just so much to be said. Chloe Brown's life has just flashed before her eyes after she was almost hit by a drunk driver and after this near-death experience Chloe decides that she needs to do everything in her power to get a life. Her life was flashing before her eyes as she was about to die and she was like, there is no life here. So I'm gonna go, I'm alive now. Let me go ahead and get one. I'm, I just want a life. I want to be better. I want, I want there to be something on my eulogy except for my name, which relatable. And on this list, she has things such as enjoy a drunken night, go camping, and of course, the inevitable, we all know it's coming, have meaningless sex, go off, sis, do what you gotta do. But the very first thing to check off her list is to move out of her parents' house, and she does. And at her new place, finds herself face-to-face -face with her very attractive new superintendent, Red. And let me tell you, first impressions were not so great. Red thinks of Chloe as this rude, obnoxious, prim and proper rich girl finally getting a chance to get out of her parents' house, whereas Chloe looks at Ren as often grumpy and judgmental. A series of events occur and ultimately Red ends up helping Chloe to check off bits of her list. I, I just loved this book so 
much Talia Hibbert. Do y'all understand the injustice that I bestowed upon myself by taking this long to read Talia Hibbert? My God, this is, this book, I loved it so much. I love the exploration of a main female character dealing with chronic pain and how it didn't determine her story but rather was just another part of it. I love that Chloe never allowed her chronic pain to consume her every waking breath. Very quickly in the book you realize that Chloe's story isn't that she is living with this chronic pain. That doesn't determine her story. What determines her story is her willingness and her determination to get a life and to live and how that was explored in this book was just so beautiful. I absolutely adored it. But also adding on top of that us getting Red's story and realizing that Red is not simply here to be Chloe's love interest. Red also has a life and he also has traumas that he's dealing with in to see him working through those traumas in order to be an effective partner for Chloe is truly commendable and just like so big brain like is it really adult romance if it's not written like this because these are real human beings or at least they feel like it it's not just like he is perfect and he has like this one issue but we get over it quickly like one thing that I have noticed throughout all of the books that I've read of Talia Hibbert so far is that when the characters are away from each other after an argument or something, they often find their way back to each other after dealing with their shit. Like in one scene after Chloe and Red got in this argument that was honestly miscommunication and yet this? This is how miscommunication should be handled because yes, it was frustrating, but it's like the characters acknowledged that it was miscommunication like that. And then they worked to fix, to address and fix the issue of the miscommunication. Like, what? I don't even do that in real life. But like I was saying, one thing that Talia Hibbert has done in all three of the books that I've read so far is that once the characters get into this argument that and often find themselves apart from one another, they fix themselves and then come back to each other to like see if it'll still work and see if they can still be in each other's life and it's like that is it's just so mature I'm like what like what is sexier than getting therapy what is sexier than addressing and acknowledging and evaluating your mental health and reflecting on your traumas and how they impact you moving forward. I was just like, this is so, this is beyond me. But yeah, I just, woo, that is everything I wanna say for Chloe Brown because since this is one part of a three part date, I should make sure that I'm doing this very quickly. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with Get A Life Chloe Brown and I am very excited to see what is in store for me with Take a Hint Danny Brown? I've officially finished the main course of date three, Take a Hint Danny Brown, and I loved it so much. Take a Hint Danny Brown is definitely a 4.5. Like, wow. If when, when, I was say if, when I read this again, it will probably be bumped up. I just, oh my God. Okay, okay. Let's just, let's focus. <laughs> I'm not okay, you guys. Do you understand? This woman, Miss Ty Hibbert, is just so great and I am so not worthy. Okay, let's get into, let's get into this. Danny Brown is a bisexual witch just looking for an orgasm. Or at least she is at the prologue of this book in which you find Danny praying in front of Oshun to give her a fuck buddy. We've all been there. And like any reasonable woman, once she sent this prayer out to be answered by the goddess Oshun, she begins to look for hints everywhere. She begins to look for signs that her fuck buddy is around the corner because if you ask Danny, they need to be in her presence currently. They need to be right there in her face. You know, like that security guard, that attractive ass security guard, also known as Saphir, that is right in front of her face 
every single day at work. Yeah, something like that. Now, there are a number of signs that can occur, you know, to let a person know that their prayers are going to be answered soon. A lot of different routes that this could take. Signs such as, I don't know, Danny getting trapped in an elevator, and which is a fear is the only one that goes to save her, and tears open the doors of the elevator like the hulking beast that he is and saves her. Well, photos start to hit the internet and they go viral with the hashtag Dr. Rugby. The interesting thing about Saphir is that he's an ex-rugby player and he actually has begun his own small nonprofit in which he coaches young boys in, in rugby and bestows upon them the tools and coping mechanisms to deal with anxieties, their overall emotions, and to de-stress basically all things mental health. Now, once photos of Zafir and Danny start to rise on the internet with the hashtag Dr. Rugby, Zafir suddenly finds himself with a lot more support for his small nonprofit. And so Zafir begs Danny to continue their fake relationship for the public eye in order to increase his publicity for his nonprofit. And Danny looking for a good fuck buddy and basically having Zafir thrown in her lap is like, yes, sir, I would gladly fake date you, but also I'm really going to fuck you. And just like any good fake dating trope, as they are fake dating, they find themselves having feelings for one another and they find those feelings growing and multiplying as the story continues. And this, this right here, <sighs> Danny was actually far more relatable to me than Chloe was and so I deeply enjoyed that aspect of the book of just her being so career driven and goal oriented to where her personal life kind of stumbles in the background. The whole reason, the whole thing that sparked this video was the post of Talia Hibbert discussing the importance of romance novels and you can definitely see that opinion being brought up and discussed in this book. As though Saphir could not get better, he loves reading romance novels and talks about how they give him hope. And while Zafir was dealing with depression and his anxiety, romance novels really helped him think brighter and think of happy endings a lot more. Basically, Zafir was the point Talia Hibbert had made in that post as a character like every time he talked about the hope romance novels gave him every time he talked about how they were therapeutic for him and helped him with his anxiety and his mental health i was just like talia hibbert way to project yourself into a character so beautifully but also danny's story of feeling as though she's not qualified enough to be in a relationship and i giggle a little bit because this woman is so amazing, so smart, and so confident and powerful. But of course, dealing with trauma from a past relationship has kind of clouded her vision of what she's capable of when it comes to love and relationships, and then how she overcomes that and works to be better, works to do better within relationships, how she recognized her own faults from past relationships and tried to do better. Like, it felt really great. And I noticed throughout the books that I've read so far, Talia Hibbert does put an emphasis on therapy and mental health and checking in on yourself and reflecting on your actions and everything. And I truly deeply appreciate it. Even if the characters are not going to therapy, discussing their mental health and the steps that they are taking to preserve it and to treat whatever traumas that they have. Honestly, this book felt like everything that the other books had been leading up to. This is how romance should be done. This is like romance with a purpose. This is somebody who cares so deeply for the genre. And so I'm so happy that I got the opportunity to read that post of hers before I read her books because honestly, every single one of them has felt that much better by understanding where she's coming from with romance and understanding her lens and her gaze when when she thinks about this genre. I will see you guys once I have finished Act Your Age Eve Brown. I have officially finished my dessert for date three, which means that I have officially finished date three. Let me tell y'all about Miss Eve Brown. Ah, oh, this book is just so cute. And I'll admit, like at the very beginning of the book, I was kind of nervous that I wasn't going to like the book as much 
as Chloe and Danny Brown. At first my hesitation with this book was in Jacob. I wasn't figuring out where him and Eve were going to have the chemistry to be romantic partners. Like I was just like literally all you guys do is argue and it was happening in a way where I was just like I don't know like maybe y'all can be friends but like romantic partners? I don't know about that and then and then as I'm like reading on it's kind of explained to me as like this is just who they are and yes that could be because Jacob is on the spectrum and this is just how he communicates and everything and maybe that's why you're having an issue with it but also Eve's not having a problem with the way that her and Jacob communicate like Eve's not having a hard time with, with everything that's going on and then baby we hit chapter 10 I'm gonna be honest, I don't even remember what happened in chapter 10, but I do remember that in chapter 10 was when I was like, oh, well, Mr. Jacob, <laughs> whoo, hello, how are you with your sexy self? Actor Age Eve Brown is all about the youngest Brown sister, Miss Eve herself. She has popped up in both of her sister's books as being kind of the like energetic sister, the random sister that interacts in all these like weird events kind of seemingly who's kind kind of seems a little flighty but is always there and always supporting her sisters honestly i always thought that she was just like the cutest characters in both chloe's book and danny's book i just thought eve was just the cutest little thing ever i was like oh we could we would be friends <laughs> you're just adorable but you find out in this book that some of the things that made her quite lovable some of the things that made her quite adorable to me aren't really that sustainable for being an adult not so sustainable in having a career and supporting yourself and quite frankly eve's parents are about sick they're like how many times are you going to quit something without even truly trying or at least in their opinion never really trying to get involved in these things and so they completely cut off eve from her trust and tell her listen you got three months to move out of here and get a job and you know be an adult which I don't know if you've ever tried to be an adult. That three months timeline scared me. And so in her distress, Eve goes ahead and starts to drive around and tries to find a way to escape her thoughts and escape her insecurities about her adulthood and about her personality truly. And so as Eve is out driving and yes, crying and honestly, becoming more and more of a mess, she finds herself stumbling across this very homely, very cute B&B. &B. And on the door of the bed and breakfast is a for hire sign. And so Eve goes ahead in that moment and decides to have an interview for their chef position. Sis is in pajama bottoms and a t-shirt, more than willing to go into this interview. She doesn't have her credentials. She doesn't have any form of a recommendation letter. Like Sis is just like, I'm here look at my greatness and that doesn't go so well for the B&B &B owner Jacob who is all about formalities who is all about keeping things in order honestly their personalities are completely opposite and that is none the more clear than in this interview she is honest I can't remember if she walked out or if she was thrown out Eve leaves that interview 100% positive that she did not get the job but she actually is Jacob's last resort especially when she hits him with her car and proceeds to break his wrist and bruise his bottom and so and now since Jacob has no other options but to hire Eve he does so and now since Eve has no other options but to take this job I think I'm going to give Eve Brown four stars I absolutely love her. I feel as though I have to admit to myself that I am a healthy or not so healthy mix of Danny and Eve Brown. All that Eve struggled with in this book of feeling as though she was afraid to really try to do something that she truly loved simply because failing in doing something that you truly love and actually care about is far worse than failing in something you don't care about and how she kind of tries new things but again never really cares that deeply about the things she um the new things that she's trying because as long as I don't put my all into it as long as my heart isn't fully in it I can't get mad at myself if it fails like that mindset that she had and how she got herself to actually start to care about something and care about it so passionately that she refused to allow herself to fail was such an amazing journey to witness in Eve. I thought Eve was just the cutest character when she was introduced in both Chloe Brown and Danny Brown's 
books, but you you love her even more when you're in her mind because when she was introduced in Chloe's book with all her love for music and the arts and how she's like introduced in, in Danny's book as kind of being a pushover and just a really supportive friend and also still kind of flighty and odd. Honestly, I loved her from the second she was described with her pastel braids. I mean, sis had my heart. And so are we surprised that I love her even more with the things I know about her? No, we're not. I love how my qualms with their communication style ended up being so valuable to their relationship. Like I thought that they were communicating quite poorly with one another. I thought that that was gonna be a real hindrance to me seeing them as a couple and being able to really see the chemistry but then as Eve was able to explain like the way we communicate with each other and how it is just so like clean cut and like crisp and like blunt and to the point is refreshing to her and how she actually likes to argue a bit more and honestly I thought that that would be a problem because in the first two books, it doesn't really seem like Eve is that type of person. And even Eve describes herself as being a people pleaser and to have somebody that automatically does not like you. I was just like, I don't know. I just don't know if he would be the one to boost Eve's ego or like to bring bring back the confidence that she truly needs to resurface in herself. And yet make me eat my words literally i was wrong i was so wrong and i was so happy to be wrong so darn cute something that talia hibbert does really well with this series is that you're able to be in the characters heads and all of a sudden you're actually able to think like them so it's really intriguing to me to think like eve and to think like jacob because unlike danny brown or unlike chloe their like whims and they're like questioning themselves even seemed more blunt and even seemed more to the point which was very interesting to read and I really appreciated it because it made me focus on other things of the character. I actually found the way that they were questioning their feelings quite refreshing because it was just like a I think I have feelings for this person. Can I really? I do. What do we do about that? And it was just so to the point but still instead of communicating how much they cared for each other with words they did it through actions there is no need for me to even try to pretend that the jury is still out because when it comes to the question of whether or not miss talia hibbert has reached bay status absolutely talia hibbert is bay i whatever she writes i will read i love the way she addresses romance i love her third act conflict i love how when the characters are apart because of whatever reason, they do not find their way back to each other until they have reflected on their actions and their personalities, until they have addressed what caused the issue in the first place. It's just something I haven't seen enough of in romance. And so, honestly, I, I think Talia Hibbert is the blueprint. I think that she is the romance author that I will always be comparing the rest of these authors to. And so good luck to the rest of y'all because this, there's no going back. But now we have reached the end of this video. It was such a joy. I had so much fun creating this. I hope you all enjoyed. I can't wait to see what the final production looks like. This was a blast. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed my voice, my face, my extraness, go ahead and press that like button down below. Press the subscribe button and press the bell notification if you would like to be notified when I upload. Have you read anything by Talia Hibberts? What are your thoughts? Leave them down below. I would love to discuss this more. Seriously, I, I would love to discuss Talia Hibbert more. If you would like to stay connected with me outside of YouTube, I will have my social medias down below. And if you would like to support this channel further, I will have my Amazon wish list and my coffee down below as well. I believe that that is everything. Although I probably forgot something because I literally always forget something, but...